Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, March 13th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I'm I Damon. I the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, of Indeterminate oh. Length, episode number 639. And due to some technical difficulties early in the week, I totally forgot a title card and card page. <clears throat> Oops. Oops, I did Oops, it again. I did it again. <laughs> in any case, it's one of those shows again. Um, we had to postpone what we were going to normally add, but it just means that Damien could be here for this. Just eat it, eat it, eat it. Or more importantly, <laughs> this. Bacon! Gotta get that bacon! 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 <laughs> I can't with you. I can't with you. <laughs> that was totally worth it. <laughs> Conspiracy between Gary I and I. <laughs> So, How could we make Damon lose his mind? So, so Gary, <laughs> what specifically regarding food are we talking about? Like people don't know by now. Right, because if you didn't catch the title, or you didn't pay attention to the sounds just now, then you would, I guess, be surprised. Surprise! Uh, believe it or not, in the history of Cubs Out Loud, we have not technically done a bacon episode. <gasps> Gasp! Now, I I do want to set the record straight. Um, we have had a couple of shows where we have discussed bacon. Um, ah. Now, COL 177 in the Wayback Machine almost 10 years ago wow. uh, is called My Bacon Number. Bitch, you don't need my bacon number. Um, when did we you can listen that? to it, obviously, to hear what it is. If you want to go back further, we go back 14 years and almost a month to episode number four, and it is just titled Bacon with an exclamation point. Wow. <laughs> so there's so, that. So 177, Damon, you were there for that. Four. No, I was the only one there for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, but we have not, uh, since we started the Let's Talk About Food series, had a, an episode on bacon and nothing but bacon. So here we are. Um, so a little bit of uh, history and information. Uh, this is coming from the great Wikipedia site. Mm -hmm. um, salted pork belly um, first appeared in China. Um, in Middle English, the term bacon or bacon with a U, so it's B-A-C-O-U-N, referred to all pork in general. And before the Industrial Revolution, bacon was generally produced on local farms and in domestic kitchens. The world's first commercial bacon was generally produced, uh, sorry, was a processing plant that opened in Wiltshire in the 1770s by a person named John Harris. And then in 1930... 99% of the world's bacon and ham exports went to Britain, where Danish bacon was preferred to domestic bacon. Now, Danish bacon was produced in state-supported factory system with a more standardized quality and was extensively advertised. Mm. And interestingly, in the Second World War, Danish bacon was not available, and the American alternative was said to be fat and heavily boraxed, 
um, it was not very popular. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't sound very tasty. Well, so this is an important thing. We're not going to get into all of this, but bacon is different around the world. Like what what people construe as bacon, um, like here in the States, we know most of us may know about Canadian bacon. So if you have ever been to the Golden Arches and you have had an Egg McMuffin mm-hmm. and it has Canadian bacon on it, it looks like a s- slice of ham. So it's still a pork product. It's still you know, cured and and all that stuff, but it's not quite the same thing. Um, But so in the history of the world, uh, China is theoretically the, the origin of salted pork belly um, into what we refer to and we know as today that uh, most of us refer to as bacon. Yes. Good to know. So yes, here in the U S it is a little different. Um, It's usually a slab. It is smoked. It is cured. Um, and it comes in various cuts and styles. Um, I believe in the UK they refer to it as streaky bacon. Um, if I remember correctly from uh, the Sorted Food Channel, having watched it now for a couple of years. So yeah, there's um, there's different styles and, and types uh, that folks may have as a as a reference. I know here in the US we have um, El Cheapo bacon, is what I call it, <laughs> um, where it is huefa thin. Um, and, uh, you know, is probably not that enjoyable in most people's, um, estimations. And then you can get, you know, more extensive in terms of like thickness, um, Mm -hmm. to like, I think it's like a regular cut. And then there's also thick cut bacon. Um, and I once had purchased from, uh, a place in Cleveland, um, Oh, I'm trying to remember what they called it. I think they called it bacon steaks. And so basically it was like one and a half inch. Yeah, about an inch and a half thick bacon. Interesting. Like when you so actually that, talk about a slab of bacon. Well, yeah. right. It's, it's like they took a whole slab of bacon, but instead of cutting it into the thinner style, they cut them really super thick um, and they actually stuffed it. So you know how we, like in the U.S., mm-hmm. we have chicken breast or pork uh, chops or pork loin, and we stuff it mm-hmm. with like a bread stuffing? They did that. Um, and I was so, ooh, this is different, and blah, blah, blah. So, of course, I had to buy it. Interesting. It does sound interesting. I'm, I'm very curious about, I would be very curious about a bacon steak. That seems interesting to me. No? You're shaking your head, Gary. It was, it was it was an experience that I will never have again because I don't want to have it again. Oh, um, it's just it was it was a difficult cut mm-hmm. um, to cook. Like Fair. that's that's the thing I found most problematic about it is like that that yeah that that it cut was it too that thick for cut. the cooking. Um. Yeah, because the fat doesn't quite render the same. Um, and, true. Fair. And, and as a person who, based on your background, likes a very specific kind of bacon, you probably would not have enjoyed it at all because it was much more mm. not that. Because mm. only the outside could potentially be the crispy part. Right. Yeah. So okay, I see, I, see, I, see, I see what you're putting down. I see what you're putting down. I can I can see it being, which is kind of why I've never spoken about it before, and I really don't want to again because it was not exactly an enjoyable experience. I'm not going to call it money wasted. I'm going to call it a lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know. That's fair enough. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> well, yeah. that's another well, track. I forgot to add to my thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of how you like your bacon, oh boy! Oh. Shall we? Shall we move to that yeah, and let, let, have that? Let, let me share the little image here. Yes. Everybody has a copy, but I want to show everybody. So this is this is cropped from the original image. I just want to say, uh, but uh, only because I didn't want to show borders around it. Uh, and That's plus, good. you can and and folks at home can can see it a little bit better. We. We, there are six, six, kind of one, two, three, four, five, six different rarities. I don't know if that's the right, right way. 
Um, <laughs> cooking, cooking, place? Co- cooking, right? Cooking Cook outcomes. Yes. Yeah. Kind of like you know, rare, rare, medium, and and well done. Yeah. It's kind of like that, but we got a little bit more love. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Except that I will say about this is definitely not six, definitely not uh-huh. one. Okay. But I I kind of need to see the other four in person. Oh <laughs> really kind of god. What I am looking for. <laughs> so are uh, so I, you, Oh wait, for our listening audience, what we've done is we put up an image of six um pictures that are that it's part of this image from uh, the Better Pork, I don't know, something council, whatever, biotech farms. Um anyways, so number one almost looks raw, like not really like cooked. Not cooked. I think and number raw. six is well done. so crispy, it's gonna shatter if I'm not so... taste like a charcoal bricket, because Maybe that is black. I would call number six like extra crispy. Extra crispy. (laughs) Like all it is is crisp. Oh no. 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 (laughs) That is like that is it will literally slap bracelet. No, 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 it can't be a slap bracelet because because <laughs> when you slap it against your it's arm, a, it's, it's just going to shatter pieces. <laughs> right, it's right, right. It's, it's probably hard. It could be hard as a rock, though. It has gotten it. I, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, speaking of this, Gary, what do you think? I'm going to ask you first. Um, okay. Which Jeff has already kind of said he's kind of, you're a tech, I think Jeff needs more texture notes to I, kind of... I, yeah I, I, so I, I will say more. this I think I'm more of a four though I've had I've had everything from two to five mm-hmm. um, if six has been in my presence I don't even go near it I'm like hell to no like if you like carcinogens and the taste of them go for it knock yourself out <laughs> um that's not me um so I've seen I've seen actually uh I don't think I've ever seen one I swear one is uncooked it looks raw like right out of the package but it looks um, very under that Two is a classic morning breakfast buffet looking kind of wilty, wimpy cafeteria bacon to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, I would have to say it's a three or a four really leaning probably a little bit more towards four. Because mm. here's the thing. I don't want my – like I said, I don't want my bacon to be so crisp that it just shatters – and like gets all over me and the table and the plate. Like I want it in. I want it inside me. Like it should go in me. That's that's the whole point of this, right? Uh uh uh. So, <laughs> <laughs> up in this mouth. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I also want it to have some flexibility to it. So I don't mm. want it to be like limp and like extra greasy. Like like that's that's not part of it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm really like. In the, I guess the middle of the scale, five is five is encroaching on six, and so I'm kind of like five most likely is pretty snappy, like pretty pretty crunchy. Um, five is salad topping, or like I would add it to like a dish of some kind if I wanted a crisp, wanted crunch, like crispy, bacon. crispy bits, right? Like, like so. Bits. Like I would like five if I if I cooked it and I made it and I went too far and I went to five I would drain it you know pat it pat it down um, with a paper towel or whatever for the, get some of the excess grease or whatever off and then I would chop the shit out of it and that probably would go an egg salad guarantee mm. like so I have yeah. flavor and I have like texture I have crunch but I'm not gonna probably make a sandwich or something. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know that that I'm eating the whole strip of bacon because it's probably gonna. Well, I'm just probably not. Yeah, gonna be happy, fours but... fours along the lines of a BLT for sandwich, Ooh, right? Okay. Five is a little too far for a BLT. I think some people would like a five as a BLT. Yeah, probably because it's not completely black, but it's got some you know some cooking. What's interesting is so if you're watching us, five is further along than Damon's background. Like 
Damon's background is really about a 4.5, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's a little more yeah. than 4, but not quite. And I think, this Jeff, is... yours is, like, a 3.5. Like, yeah. Jeff's is kind of where I like mine um, for the most part. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So, for me, um, so, if you can see my background, this is kind of the bacon I want. So, I'm kind of, like, 5. Okay. I love a good like crispy crunchy bacon um so owen is actually doing something really fun because it's something i also had saw um that i almost shared so one of the images he shared to us in the um sewell entourage chat available on telegram um uh, slash telegram dash col mm-hmm. uh, is he did that he shared an image which has the bacon cooked several different ways Oh, so there's, which okay. is very interesting to me, because um, uh, so growing up, here we go. Here's story time. Story time. Um, we, if you remember, like, I don't know if, well, did did any of you have like the the bacon rack, like the the. The, you would put the micro, the bacon on this little like it was slightly raised, <laughs> and you would throw the bacon on it, and you yes. would throw it in the microwave, and it yeah. would cook for like a minute a piece for each piece, and you would get this like, I mean, okay, let's be honest, you would get somewhere between as I look at this picture again, three and f- six, uh, <laughs> depending on what you were doing. Um, so I love doing that. It was a thing, like, whenever we would have bacon, that's what we would do. Um, I've had bacon in skillet, and I have, I've had it everywhere else. For some reason, for me personally, bacon on this, in the microwave is the best way to do it. Um, so. Have you, have you ever tried baking bacon? Yes, I have tried them all. I have had bacon, honey. <laughs> bacon is a staple in my life look look um, I, I i know bacon is a staple but how yeah, the method of had, cooking isn't you didn't necessarily yeah. have all the different methods of cooking. i have had i have had bacon in the skillet i have bacon from the oven i've had bacon i have yet to have bacon in air fryer so i'm very curious about that you've had sous vide bacon i have not had sous vide bacon okay. I, the first two i have not had but mm-hmm. microwave Baking rack, baking the department, baking water in the skillet. Yes, I've had that one. non skillet and cast iron skillet because we had a cast iron skillet at home. I've had all of the rest of them. And for me personally, mm-hmm. just for efficiency and sometimes taste, I will give it to microwave. However, mm-hmm. however, I default to... If bacon is being cooked and you're cooking bacon for me, I don't care how you cook it, as long as I can have it in the mouth hole. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look, you you have your favorite, but they're all kind of your favorites. Yeah, you just have yeah. a favorite favorite, you know. I have a favorite thing, but if I were to personally like pick one of these, I would probably be somewhere like you said, Gary. You're kind of right. I'd be somewhere between four and five, more approaching five. Um, I do like a crispy bacon and i could even eat six to a point mm. now i see you winston gary yeah no, he's not the only one winston. yeah there's a if you can find the right moment like the moment where it's just getting that little like crispy burnt ends to Add a little bit of just a different taste to it. Then you're good. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. It is. It is. It is difficult to get it. Um, and it has to be like you're gonna cook. You're cooking it at home. You can't do it. Like you're not gonna find it in a restaurant. You're not gonna find it. You're making it yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, like a perfect example of this is so our microwave here in the house. Um, I don't have a bacon rack. So we just use um, towels and uh, paper towels and, and microwave safe plates um, to cook the bacon. Well, our microwave is a turntable. 
mm -hmm. you think is usually meant to be make things even. It doesn't. Um, there's usually like a center point <laughs> where, depending on where it is, that's where I'm going to get the most like crispy slash darkness. Um, uh, I will. I have made bacon in the microwave here at home, cooked it to a certain point, and then rotated strips because some are getting a little bit more crispy than the other. So I kind of like pick them up and flip them, not flip them, but move them around so that the ones that are on the farther edge mm -hmm. get a little bit more of the time in the center. Yeah. And sometimes you get that darkness. speaking, how you could get crispy bacon from a microwave baffles me and you can well apparently I mean, it's just well what's happening is that the fats are cooking the proteins so mm -hmm. like and if the and some of the fat renders out and therefore what's yeah. left behind is a less fatty less moistured um portion of the, of the bacon of the meat so i mean it, it's completely possible i'm not a fan of that I'm not a fan of it yeah that's fine you know, no, I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong. If I came to your house and I, you know, and y'all fed it to me, I would probably eat it. And I wouldn't like, you know, turn my nose up at it and, and you know, make a fuss unless it looked like six. And then I just would pass. Like I would just well, be like, I'm, I'm good without it. I'll be, I'll, um, I'll say this right now. If you came to our house and we were making bacon, Jim's not making it in the microwave unless we're rushing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making Jim, it in the microwave. Jim knows how to properly make bacon. Jim knows how to make bacon. Jim knows how to make a lot of things. So I'm sure he would not make it like, unless again, unless we like are rushing. Like we're make, like for me, the reason I like the microwave so much is because I'm usually making it before or while I'm at work. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. So it's just a kind of quick thing. And I agree uh, with you on on the convenience factor, Damon. Because honestly, like I never made bacon much growing up younger or as an adult because I just wasn't all about the mess. Mm. Like in a pan grease splattering everywhere have to have like a, a either a lid or a splatter shield or just something and i was like okay this is just too much of like uh, no but okay. then when i learned about the oven method mm. on a baking sheet mm -hmm. i was like what is this yes. and it changed my life <laughs> and so i was like this is the way I, I prepare bacon pretty much all the time. And you could still cook bacon in an oven in, in these variety of like formats, meaning like how, how far it goes. You can absolutely overcook it and burn it. You can absolutely like get extra crispy or, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. you know, in between. So it's, it's about paying attention to it. And I will say this um, here in the U S the, the manufacturing, like the preparation of the, of the bacon itself really is pretty varied and i say it that way because you mm -hmm. kind of really have to pay attention to what cut you're buying um and what's it what's had it done to it like does it have extra flavoring those kind of things because those are going to really affect like the cooking i think um like yes it'll change the taste obviously if it's like maple bacon or peppered bacon or you know mm -hmm. double hickory smoked or some crap whatever um so yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So I will say, so for those of you who are talking, speaking about bacon and cooking, if you are cooking in a microwave, um, the thinner ish, the better. Mm -hmm. FYI, you're not going to get as it's not going to take as long because thicker bacon takes a lot more, lots longer to render um, the fat, and then you have to cook it longer. And in addition, um. If you like crispier bacon, like me, um, you need, you're not going to get that crispiness without sacrificing um, doneness. Right. You're going to have to, you're going to, you're going to either have to get a little less crispy, but it be done and tasty, or you're going to have to get that crispiness and it potentially burn. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, moving right along. So yeah, for me, I mean, it's it's the oven, um, and the thing I love about that is actually it's cleaner, and by that I mean like because it's more of a slow cook, um, 
you know, so it does take just as long, maybe a little longer, depending on the temperature that you use, that kind of stuff. But, you know, the the drippings, like all of the grease is in the pan, and then you just decide what you do with it. Me, I would save it, like, and then I use it in other <laughs> applications later on um, to yeah. cook or to, you know, prepare things. Yeah. Um, I am a, my mom used to, no, well, I think it was my mom, well, my dad, one of them. Whenever they would make bacon in a skillet, it would they would pour the grease into a the Crisco can and <laughs> to have mm-hmm. save the bacon grease for later for things. And I I didn't understand it. I thought it was gross personally because it's already like like it's fat and it's you know already been cooked. What are you doing with it? But I I know better now. I know better now. Yeah. But as a kid, it didn't make sense. Yeah. No, I've I've used um, bacon fat in a bunch of different things for for cooking, like, and yeah, so it's it does wonders, but it does take you know some some planning and to think you know about what it is that you're going to do. So yeah, mostly for kind of hot applications, but yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> bacon. So that oh. being said, um, I, yeah. I put together three categories. Because I thought this would be kind of comical or whimsical. Um, so we have the good, the bad, and the fad. <laughs> <laughs> um, the good being uh, what we what we enjoy the most, or have a favorite of, or have really like enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on at this moment and why I'm laughing. For the record, you can take that out. I was being a smartass. Anyways. Um, okay, hold on. For the bad. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> smartass. So um, for the bad, it's uh, things that we've experienced that we really don't care for. Um, and then the fad is obviously a thing that kind of came and or went. Or maybe is still around. Like that people... Mm. For some reason, enjoy, like. Um, Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because um, I think food gets to be very, in the American cuisine, I think it becomes very fad-y, meaning, like, it rises to, like, a zeitgeist kind of thing, and people got to try it or do this thing, you know, and then, like, I don't know, like, sometimes it's inventive, like a cronut, you know, (sighs) like like a a croissant in the shape of a donut kind of a thing. That's inventive. It's a little different. Um, I'm sure in another ten years, like it will, it will kind of not really have any bearing in in, in any direction. Um, mm. It might be common enough place that people won't even think twice about like the fanaticism behind it. Um, and yet, on the other side of it, there are things you know that just really kind of rise up, and um, you know, people are like, "That was that was a thing." Yes, that was a thing, honey. That was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, starting with the good, um, Damon, why don't you go first? Like, what is what is a, a good application or, or uh, preference sure. of? Sure. So this is a link to a specific like recipe. I I I just love this flavor combination very 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 much, okay. and it is called like the bacon black and blue burger. Okay. So it's generally a hamburger sometimes seasoned with like like the blackened seasons of like um you know, louisiana cajun or something seasons. like that yeah cajun seasoning then you put bacon on it um this recipe in particular calls for pepper bacon um and then you can you know add blue cheese or blue cheese dressing to kind of um add on to it it is such a wonderful like flavor combination Mm -hmm. that I, if I see it on a menu, um, I will use, that will usually be the thing I will go for. Cause I just love this, like, um, like the, sometimes the sweetness, but sometimes like just the smokiness of the bacon in combination with that. Um, I'm used to, I think the uh, briny comes to mind, but I don't think it's the word I want to use. But like that very unctuousness of of like a blue cheese, and then um, the spices kind of just it's just a wonderful combination to me. Um, 
It, it was the first different. thing I thought of. Yeah. First thing I thought about when um this when you were um when I saw the categories, I was like, oh, if there's one thing I could eat, I don't want to say constantly, but this would be a perfect example of something I would enjoy. Yeah, I uh, think the black and blue burgers, just the general black and blue burgers mm -hmm. are um are just always have bacon. I don't think I've seen a black black and yeah. blue burger that doesn't have one. I've seen it every once in a while. Uh, actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I didn't check it, granted, but um, the first place I went to look for one was uh, Red Robin. And I, I, they have a black and blue burger, but I don't think it has bacon on it. But again, I could be wrong. I was literally, you know, as I said, I was running a little late today. Um, so I was trying to find one, and I couldn't confirm if it had it or not. Mm. Um, come on, I'll check. I'm checking now, but yeah, this is my usual. Like I said, this would be the thing I would go to. Bacon and cheeseburgers are really are a really good like combination in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things um, I can't remember a place. What was the place called? Yeah, they don't really show it on this image. Yeah, the only, the only thing is they don't let you like. Kind of see what's supposed to be in it. Yeah. Or at least it's not easy to. Oh, see. you've got to like oh, browse without pricing. Yeah. No, just... Because when you click it. There it goes. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Sauteed and black. Oh, so this one has mushrooms, caramelized onions, creamy cheese sauce, blue cheese crumbles, lettuce, and roasted garlic aioli. So theirs does not. Good to know. Okay, now I figured that part out. I'm done with that part. Um, but yeah, whenever I think of a black and blue burger, I think of having it with uh, uh, bacon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just maybe that's just me. But well, I've I've seen like many restaurants. I I agree with you, Jeff. I think some several restaurants when they make the black and blue, it's usually like a bacon black and blue. It's usually that combination of the flavors, right? Which is why I think it's good i mean bacon on anything is great but like this in particular yeah yeah i will say this so um for me i'm personally not a fan of blue cheese or blue cheese dressing any of that kind of Get stuff out. <laughs> i'm not in your house girl calm down <laughs> um, <laughs> so like when i saw you put this other i was like that's good like and 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 <laughs> And I mean, good for everybody else. Like, if you love blue cheese, like, I'm pretty sure Drew, this is where he and I, like, diverge. I'm, I'm, if I recall correctly, he likes blue cheese, loves, like, mm -hmm. having blue cheese and things. And I'm like, nope. That's Pass. Me. Like, recently, I made a mistake. I bought, you know, one of those prepared salad bowls that you can oh. get in the store. And it comes with a little dressing thing. And I wasn't paying attention because I bought, like, three different varieties of salad. And I knew one of them came with a blue cheese dressing. And I was like, that's okay. I'll just apply a different dressing. But I wasn't paying attention. This is about two weeks ago. And I took the salad out. You know, when I take the salad and I put it in a different bowl and I transfer it and I like, you know, zhuzh it up and add a couple things. And I open the, the little dressing thing and then I poured it over top and I took a bite and I was like, Bleh! I was like, okay, <laughs> damn it. This is the one with the blue cheese dressing. I grew up oh, I grew up where our salad dressings that we had at the table were always um uh, uh uh west western french dressing I think they just wishbone now who part purchased that at what some point calls it uh but just western dressing um and <clears throat> Marie's blue cheese chunky chunky blue cheese dressing so I grew up on blue cheese and I absolutely love it. In fact, yeah, that's what I prefer for my wings. Yeah. Is I prefer blue cheese over ranch. Like when I grew up in high school, my best friend from high school, this was his salad. Like he he liked blue cheese dressing, but he actually liked and I forget what it was called. Um there's a name for it. It's French dressing with blue cheese crumble in it. Um, and That's a little bit, out, yeah. and I can't remember what it's called, but anyways, um, he used to order that or he would order both of them to mix them together. 
Uh, and I was, I was like, uh, that's all you, baby, because that's not, no, that's not, that's, that's not, nice. I'm just not a fan of, of the funk and the mm-hmm, sourness mm-hmm. of yeah. blue cheese, personally. I mean, so, I think yeah. accompanying blue cheese with bacon, I think kind of has this balance between those two, which is a very delightful flavor. Yeah. In my humble opinion. No, and, and I don't disagree. Like, I think I think there are definitely flavor combinations, things that work really well. But if you're not a fan of one of them, like, it's not going to change. Like, yeah. like, I've had, like, I've got, been to a potluck and somebody made, like, a mac and cheese. But they decided to get, like, all artsy-fartsy with it. And so they were like, oh, this is, like, a five cheese, you know, mac and cheese or whatever. And then without thinking, I'm like, oh, I love mac and cheese. So, you know, it's like I take some. And then I start eating it. And I'm like, Okay. And what then I'm like, Jesus, did you put right? In I'm like, what did you put in this? Oh, we did Pecorino Romano, Monterey. Like, and they start rattling this stuff off, and I'm waiting. And then they go, and blue cheese. And I'm like, mm. that explains it. Yeah, that explains the taste. <laughs> I, I, I will have to have to admit, blue Ooh. cheese and mac and cheese, probably not so great. That's more like the cheddar Gruyere, Monterey Jack. Mm. I think, I, I think, Gruyere. honestly. Blue cheese can fit most any application where cheese goes. You just have to know what you're doing with it. Because to me, it is a strong profile yeah. of a you gotta be mm-hmm. You got to be really careful because it can, it can overpower right. very quickly. Mm-hmm. So. As opposed to the bacon where bacon can actually be pretty weak. Like you can put bacon in something and not taste it, um, which seems like a travesty to me. It's like, why are you bothering? Like, you know, if yeah. you're put bacon in, I should be able to taste the damn bacon. Mm. That's how I feel about yeah. that. So, Poro and his lactose intolerance. Oh. Mm. Well, we're 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 gonna move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gary, what about you? Because I want yours, like right now. <laughs> oh, actually, I believe you may have had a version. Oh, that's right. Well, I read right. So here's the thing. Like, to me, bacon has always just kind of been bacon. Like, I'm pretty good for the most part with any bacon. But I did fall in lust with a specific version of bacon. This is um, – so there's going to be two links. There's going to be two recipes. Or, well, one's a recipe and then one's, like, what I originally fell in love with. Um, it's called candied walnut bacon. So you make the bacon. Um, this is an oven method. Um, but you end up making a topping – and you uh, put that on top of it when it when it bakes, and then you end up with a candied nut uh, topped or coated bacon. There is a restaurant in Cleveland, Ohio that I dearly love as one of like my all time favorite destinations called Lucky's Cafe in Tremont. It's on the east side of Cleveland. Chef Heather Heveland is an amazing person. Uh, it was on Triple D Diners, Drivers, and Dives on Food Network many years ago. Which is how I learned of it. I learned of it and drove there just on a whim on a weekend many years ago so I could go to this place because I was really taken um, with the concept. And it's a coffee house, little cafe kind of deal. Um, and they make uh, – they on their brunch weekend menu, they have pecan bacon. Um, Drew and I dubbed it meat candy because it is so – sweet not not cloying sickening sweet but it is so sweet and flavorful um and nutty because the pecans are ground um not quite to a powder but like not super chunky yeah. like kind yeah. of a nice fine um kind of like you know um you know uh coarse grind and then they put that you know on as the part of the topping and the preparation um and you get it as a side um, I highly recommend people if they ever go there that they they taste it or they get it because it is astounding. It is life changing. Unless you are allergic to walnuts or pecans, just sorry. Correct. <laughs> or, or you're somebody who's not a fan of nuts. Right. Well, you. well, right. If you're not a fan of nuts, then you could go with candied bacon by just doing brown sugar mm-hmm. um, to give it like a sweetness and and that kind of uh, aspect to it. But yes, yeah, so this is like my like my all time. It's Fate. really fucking good. So I can I can attest to Gary's. Uh, <laughs> we were um, when we've been usually. Um, well, it's been a couple of years actually. Yeah, okay. quite. A few uh, years. Yeah, so um, it's kind of the Sunday like final thing for when we've gone to Claw 
um, that we will go to brunch. And I mean, this place is amazing. It's busy because it's oh, brunch yeah. and it takes a minute. And it's also usually April. So it's not exactly, it's not quite warm enough usually for like outdoor seating. So you kind of have to wait a little while. Um, and, but this is well worth it. And this in particular, this meat candy um, <laughs> is, is definitely worth it um, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm just sorry. I'm, remembering it now and i i love the idea of the like the nuttiness adding to like a like a smoky you know bacon kind of flavor it's just kind of i can see those flavors kind of really working well together and and one of the things i love about what chef heather does is like everything is locally sourced um made on site kind of a thing so it's their their pecan bacon is specifically three slices of thick cut um, and then it's a pecan like mixture that they end up putting on there. And so it's it's something special. But so, yeah, that's like my all time favorite. I've tried a couple of times to make it and have not necessarily been successful. Mm. But this recipe that I linked, I think, clued me in to why. And it's interesting to me because it uses a little bit of flour. And I think mm. the flour is the key because the flour with the nuts ends up like kind of creating the binder effect that you want that gets the nuts to stick to the bacon um, without causing uh, issues. So, yeah. So that's the that's recommendation. Um, so it's like tiny, tiny amount. Yeah, it's not very much. It's it's. I mean, to me, it's kind of like how you add a little flour to like something that's you know saucy or very liquidy to get mm -hmm. you know kind of thickening. And I think what it is is that the honestly, I, I, as weird as it is, I think it's the gluten in the flour that like kind of helps a little bit with the the binding between the bacon. Mm -hmm. And it does mm -hmm. what a, what what flour does in a roux. Yeah. 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 So there's that, Mister Jeff. What about you? Uh, well, I mean, I was about to put in here just bacon, just in general. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm like, okay, let's go for some sort of dish. And I'm going to go with the classic, uh, not good for you at all. I admit it. But when you're talking about bacon, you can't really say necessarily that it's good for you. It's just very tasty. Uh, so I decided to go with the Wendy's Baconator. So... And and I fully support this. I will admit when this came on the scene, I went and I got one and I totally fucking fell in love with this grease ball of a burger sandwich in fast food. I was like, this shit is the bomb. It is done mm -hmm. right. Because mm -hmm. Wendy's of all the fast food places, in my opinion, only once have I been disappointed in their bacon, like mm. on a sandwich. Otherwise, it is on that like crispier side um, so it's it, there is a crunch factor to it when you bite into the burger as opposed mm. to just like, wah, wah, you know, kind of. <laughs> and, and in some sense, it's no. just a bacon cheeseburger. I mean, it is, yeah. you know, but, but it's still the, 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 it's the ingredients they use for the bun and it were something it, it, as I mean, they've got the right amount of ketchup and mayo to make a nice little pink sauce, essentially. Um mm -hmm. Uh, six pieces of crispy applewood smoked bacon. Hence, yeah, they... it's called the Baconator because it has more than just like two slices of bacon or even three, maybe. It's actually six. And, and even because they have uh, like two quarter pound patties of of, of beef. Yeah. They've got, it's bun, beef, beef cheese, bacon, beef, cheese, <laughs> bacon, bacon, ketchup and mayo. And bun, yeah. Although I, think, I, 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 I really think that it might even be better if the, uh, the the ketchup and mayo or at the bottom. No. Maybe oh. I don't know. It, it, but no, no, no. In any no, case, no. it's luscious. It's delicious. It's. It is. Okay. It is like guilty pleasure, like in a in a wrapper i mean honestly it is it is it's, it's one of it's just it's good it's really good and i agree with you gary like they are one of the few places that i have been to where i love their bacon um 
I have had bacon other places. Um, McDonald's was just shut the fuck up. You don't, you don't got bacon. I mean, you got little tiny strips of <laughs> shit. Um, whatever. Um, but like Wendy's, I taste bacon when I have anything that has their bacon on it. Um, uh, like, uh, like, so qu- real quick, just so everyone understands, my breakfast meat of choice normally is sausage. Um, Mm-hmm. I prefer sausage over bacon most of the time. But if we're going to Wendy's to have like breakfast, I'll get their bacon like things automatically because that's what I, I prefer their bacon more than their, their sausage. Because it's also, it's not wimpy, but it's not like like overly crispy. It's a nice little blend in the middle. I don't mm-hmm. know if they oven bake it. I'm sure that actually I'm pretty it's sure. It's probably closer to a to a five than a four, but probably somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, 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 exactly. And um it it tends to be again a little bit thicker than some of the other bacons that we've had on other I've had in other fast food places. Right. Um and that's what I think makes it better. So I'm all for the baconator. It's funny because I was just looking over their menu. Um, do you guys remember? So at, I, apparently they don't care anymore because I was like, well, there are three Baconators, but there's only two on the menu right now. I don't know if you remember that there was a third. So there's the son of, which mm-hmm. is, I think, is it a single patty? No, it's no, it's just a smaller like patty. Oh, it's like the... it's junior patties. That's what it is. Yeah. So you still get two patties, but it's juniors or they have the regular Baconator. But there was a third one and it was basically a Dave's triple, but with like, I think three layers of bacon. Oh God. It was insane. Oh, like, like it was also like $11 or some crazy. I remember. Yeah. Like, I think I remember it was like, I remember cause I got it once and I was like, this is a monstrosity. <laughs> I ate it. <laughs> I loved every greasy, like messy moment of it, <laughs> which is kind of comical because when um, my mom, uh, her thing was to go for Whoppers at, at Burger King. Mm-hmm. And I always was like, why do you always get a Whopper? You're wearing it like every time. Like, it's just, <laughs> the the sauces with the onion, like it was just always kind of mm-hmm. drippy, like making a mess. And I was, I was like, mom, like, come on, like, can't you pick it like a non-messy burger? But when I remember when I ate this, like. Like, I don't remember what they called it. I don't know if it was the giant or something. Um, but yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. Uh, but it was part of the Baconator lineup. And yeah, so it, it made a big old mess. But I was like... I would like to put an honorable mention into this category too. Speaking of uh, fast food uh, the sandwiches with bacon. Um, the Jack in the Box um, uh, Sourdough Jack. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is essentially the same thing as ye old Hardy slash Carl's Jr.'s uh, uh, Frisco burger when they had it. I'm not sure if they mm-hmm, still have mm-hmm. it. Uh, Hardy still has the Frisco burger. At least I've seen it when I've gone out because that's my preference if I go to a Hardy's. Mm. Uh, by the way, down here. there is a baconfandom.com website that has a page dedicated to the Baconator and I am redeemed. I am not crazy. In 2009, Wendy's began offering three different varieties of the Baconator. The single patty, the double, and the triple. So uh, the single was one patty, three strips. The double was twice as much and the triple was three patties, nine strips. I am currently on the the Wendy's uh, menu that I have now, and I'm, I think all the Wendy's menus, like the one I link was just one I found from a Google search, right? But um, I I actually went to at the actual Wendy's dot com to get the U.S. because the one I linked was for UK, and I'm like, oh, uh-huh. only has one <laughs> one Baconator in there, and I'm like, I know they have different levels, but I'm looking at it, <clears throat> and it has. The first burger it has on here is also the big bacon cheddar <laughs> cheeseburger. Yeah. And then the three sides, the double and the triple. The bourbon bacon cheeseburger, the double and the yep. triple. Love that one now. They did the favorite. regular Dave's 
single, double, triple mm-hmm. Baconator, Son of Baconator. Uh, I don't know why they don't have the third one, but I remember the third one too. Because it's basically all their sandwiches have this. Right. Yeah. You can line. probably you can probably get the triple now. You just have to say you want three patties. Right. So it uh, does say on this website, eventually the Baconator triple was removed from the menu, but it can still be special ordered. Mm-hmm. So I think you just order a double or like a Baconator and say, but I want I want it to be like a triple. So I want three patties and three three things of... Maybe it's bacon. essentially on the secret menu. Could be. You know how, how most places essentially have the secret menu or something like that? Where if you end up ordering it there. I'm curious. I'm I'm now searching for a Wendy secret menu just to see what we get. <laughs> All right. Oh my god. Right. Supposedly there is a quadruple baconator. David's eyes just practically popped out of his head. No. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> arteries clogged and just <laughs> the minute I think about it I'm just like oh that sounds so oh that I feel oh it, it feel like sick. sounds so good it but so it's good, something but it, you never mm, want oh there is something called the barnyard burger Comes with a layer of bacon, a layer of cheese, then a layer of beef, another layer of cheese. And in the end, it's also uh, topped with a layer of spicy chicken and ham. Get out. That's why it's called the barnyard, because it has has another pig thing and a chicken. The the Grand Slam or the meat cube? Get that shit out of here. Let's move on. (laughs) Anyways. So, I, I think that's another another uh, uh, show, the uh, uh, secret menu show. Okay. The secret menu. Okay. To, to talk about the different things that different different secret menus, the fossil, the, uh-huh. the T Rex. This is Big Bacon Classic, but Big ba- Bacon Classic was on the the Wendy's menu that was locally here, so that's unnecessarily secret, secret anymore. Menu. Okay. But those are my honorable mentions. Anybody else have some honorable mentions? Um, so this might be slightly controversial, I guess, as an honorable mention. Um, I, depending on the moment and the mood, I like bacon bits. Like bacos. Mm-hmm. Textured right. soy protein with salt and smoke flavoring. <laughs> like, <laughs> not really bacon. Not um, real bacon. I like having that like on salads and, and just as kind of yeah. like a seasoning. Yeah. God, I yeah. I'm bacon. with you on that. Like, I have bought like large plastic, like, you know, some kind of square uh, tubs um, when I've oh, seen it in places uh, because, yeah, it's like a court. Or something yeah. of you know dried mm-hmm. uh, bacon bits, but it's not actual bacon, bacon, bacon pieces. Kind of like the like the bacon strips that you were you know. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a slightly it. different thing. And then I know, I know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, yeah. But the uh, the uh, I remember bacon growing up. I remember it very very plainly because it was a thing that we used to have, and it was I would think I would put, excuse me put on salad because it was that was what it was. Oh for. yeah, totally. I oh mean, totally. Yeah. I, in the 80s, it's got to be like, I mean, that was the thing. It went on, on every salad. It mm-hmm. went on um, baked potatoes in our house. Mm-hmm. Um, or if we got experimental or if Gary got experimental, I would put it in the mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. Um, like I would just, you know. I don't think that's experimental. I just think that's like if you're litigating, <laughs> especially like I, I actually think for I, I got ingredients for uh, uh, a Thanksgiving leftover casserole, which I bastardize and just make not with leftovers. Um, and uh, one of the one of the things that calls for leftover mashed potatoes, and I'm like, well, I don't have any, so I just get that packet of like, yeah, uh, uh, boil some water, <laughs> throw it in, and, and mix it up mashed potatoes, the flake mashed potato. right? The hybrid yeah. mashed potatoes, I suppose they are, but this is the loaded variety, and it has. It, I'm sure it has bacon 
right. bacon bits or or bacon's bacon flavor or something. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, another one that I have have, which isn't really a menu item, uh, would be um, uh, bacon and maple syrup. So like if you're having pancakes, you let the maple syrup or like when you, you're at like the IHOP or something, you're pouring syrup over your thing. Well, you got the bacon there. Syrup goes over that too. And the sausage, because I like sausage with my breakfast as well, Damon, but I also like bacon. So I like to <laughs> do, I'm, you know, that meme, both, both, both. Both are good. Yeah. Both are good. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, all right. that's all right. That's fine. Anyway, move right along. All right, uh, let's. Uh, we we looked at the good. Let's take a look at the bad. Um, I will start by saying, there's something bad when it comes to bacon. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes, most definitely Absolutely. overcooked. There, maybe. there are there are some. Oh no, David's going to start us off. Yeah, I will start us off. Because this this monstrosity actually exists. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, and I don't know who who um, came they, up. They, with, they've well, got I, a lot of questionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does. Yes, I know who came up with that. I, I, I being uh, anyway. Um, so Lester's bacon soda. Um, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, um, I have. Um, tried this like a little. I have not. I have not. I will admit, I have not bought a a bottle. I have. Someone has bought a bottle, and mm-hmm. I've tried some. Because I, I will admit, I was genuinely curious. I've heard many different things about it. I've heard that it's kind of like a mapley flavor, you know, smoky mapley soda. Which okay. I like those flavors. I can see that being a thing. But in soda? Um, I tried it and was not a fan. Uh, it was, it let, was... Let, me, let me put something out to you. So there's they also carry other sodas. I'm sure they do. Yes. Such as I'm aware. ranch dressing soda. Yes. No. No. Let's see, what's this entire package here? Let me get the whole thing. They also have sweet corn soda. They have pumpkin pie soda. Uh -uh. They have buffalo wing sauce soda. Uh -uh. They have ranch dressing soda. They have peanut butter and jelly soda. I don't go. It ain't coming in this house. It ain't coming in this mouth. Yeah. If you want, you can get get all of these in a six-pack sampler pack. Uh -uh. That's wonderful. Nope. And y'all go right on ahead and waste your money and do all that shit. I will hold my cash and go spend it on like actual bacon or uh, ranch dressing. I, I think they also have like <laughs> cucumber flavor or something like that. Uh, which See, might be, to some people, might be okay because people like cucumber water for some reason. Um, yeah. I swear to yeah. God that there was, I don't remember where it was. But in in uh, sorry, I got slightly sidetracked. Um, I don't remember where it was, but uh, uh, one of my contracting jobs that I've had over the past decade, for some reason, at the cubes we were at, somebody had left in one of the drawers bottles of this like ranch these type of these sodas and i'm like nope we didn't even know how long they'd been there so i think I they got like don't. passed around people just kind of like left it at other people's desk <laughs> no Mm-mm. yeah so um yeah, I've I've actually had the monstrosity that Damon has listed. Mm-hmm. Never again, because <laughs> I thought it was going to be like a fun, whimsical kind of thing, and it was one of the grossest things I've ever eaten in my entire yes, life. It is. It does not. Oh, just it. 
Uh, and I know that this company is known for this, and I know that they do this a lot, and they make you know many different types of random like flavored food soda type things, and people will get it and try it and drink it and then regret all the choices they've made in their life. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just know better. When you combine a food product and soda, I don't necessarily think that's going to work personally. So I you can you can do whatever you want with it. I'm I'm probably more than likely not gonna have it. Whatever it may be, whether it's um the yeah, I no, uh, no. Yeah, the, no. no. So Gary, no, no. what about you? Um, so this might work in certain places, certain applications, but I think like again, it's another monstrosity. Someone decided that this was a good idea. Um, so bacon wrapped pretzel rods. I okay. actually have this at a restaurant in Ohio. I'm actually looking if I can find the pictures because I had taken, oh, I'm probably going to have to search for them on social media because I had taken pictures and I went to this place and I hated it so much. I bitched about it and like, <laughs> like kind of shamed them oh, because God. I was livid that someone thought this was okay an acceptable idea <laughs> as a concept. Oh, dear. Because I was like, so when you read the menu, um, yeah, uh, I don't know if they're still in business or not. I'd have to go look them up. Um, the Simon Keaton Inn um, is in Springfield, Ohio, which is where I had family previously. My dad used to live there. Um, this is from July of 2011. So we're almost 11 years ago. This is how long ago I am so still <laughs> that experience. Um, so yeah, uh, I was I was like excited about going to this place. It was highly rated. Like people locally love this place, which you should always be a little wary of. Um, and there's a picture of that I took of them. And so <laughs> let me read my description. This is their pub pretzels appetizer. I was actually disappointed when I saw their version of what didn't match my imagination. Given that the waiter explained that they make everything from scratch, I presumed they made the pretzel dough, not simply grabbed rods out of a container. Mm. However, um, uh, I would like they let so. What they did was they took bacon, wrapped it around a pretzel rod, and at this specific place, I think they just threw them in the deep fryer. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I'm looking at this. Um, oh, now, wow, the recipe ash. I think I linked is for oven baked, which um, I would if... probably prefer. Right. So. Um, but my thing is, pretzel rods are already dry mm -hmm. and salty. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, probably uh, not the right combination. And already cooked. Mm -hmm. And, like, I never try to make a pretzel rod into a biscotti. <laughs> which in Italian is twice baked. Like, so, I mean, I just... <sighs> I mean, no. it, it, you might be able to get this to work in a, in a way if you started off, if you actually were used the bacon during the process of making the rods. Like you may have par cooked the rods enough that you could then wrap the bacon and cook the bacon and it would just basically finish cooking the rod or something like that. Mm. It might Maybe. work. I don't know. It would take some experimentation. Don't take my word for it. I'm not going to say it will work. Right. But so, definitely I mean, not a combination that I would expect 
And uh, also, eating bacon and hard pretzels. Right. It's, uh, especially when it's in that form. Yeah, basically, well, doesn't like isn't steak. really, and and the key thing meatable? is that the waiters said they make nearly everything from scratch. So in my brain, I was super excited about homemade pretzel rods. So I'm thinking, like, um, you know how they're very popular right now. You get pretzel sticks, quote unquote, mm-hmm, when you mm-hmm. go to a lot of like bars or yeah, 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 type cafes. Yeah. And they piss me off right now, too, because they all pretty much deep fry them. Like, you get the dough. It's already, like, it's just, you know, you buy it pre-made. And, like, it's already scored, you know, or whatever. And so they just throw it in a deep fryer. They take it out. They throw a little salt on it. And it just drives me nuts. Because I'm like, could you just please fucking bake them? Bake them. Like, because it's just, it's a whole different experience. So that's what I was thinking, is that it was going to be, like, you know, these, you know, par-cooked or whatever, ready to go on-premise made pretzel sticks with bacon wrapped around them and they were going to be like you know finished in an oven and i was so excited and then they set this down and i was like are we serious i get five pretzel rods with a single strip of bacon around each of them and i paid how much for this as a fucking appetizer people out your goddamn mind now a similar type thing with (laughs) different types of pretzel pretzels might be interesting uh think of like the like, auntie ann's the 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 big soft yes. pretzels right right, right wrapped yeah. in bacon like a soft, yes a soft pretzel that would probably in be bacon. delicious boom like amazing yes mm. absolutely fucking lutely it's the hard pretzels where i think is where but a hard pretzel is. wrapped in bacon so yeah. i i'm gonna put this as a bad method <laughs> because there we go the idea, the the I, experience. For me. That's all there is yeah, to say. The me. idea is good, except the execution was awful. Um, yeah. But I, I would definitely say uh, bacon wrap pretzel, and I'm not going to use the word rod. Just bacon wrap pretzel sounds like a good idea. You just probably it probably would be better on a soft pretzel versus a hard pretzel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hard pretzels are just. Just a hard pretzel. That's it. Maybe, maybe you have something to dip this, it in. But... I will say this. Sometimes people take things too far. Like I, we went through a bacon fad. It was in what the, the, the 2000s, not the 2010s. I think it was in the aughts where like everybody, everything had to have bacon or it needed to be wrapped in bacon. So bacon wrapped burgers, bacon wrapped meatloaf, bacon wrapped turkeys. And I'm just like, why? 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 <clears throat> why? why? Like, this is just going too far. I had no problem. Oh, yeah. With this bad. I'm like, no, that's just no. Because the problem is, and I even did it once, and I'm still pissed at myself for it. I made a bacon weave. Mm. Do you remember this? Where you take the bacon? No, girl, not that kind of weave. <laughs> like, <laughs> where you take the bacon and you lattice it, right? Uh-huh. And you make a whole square. Because I Maybe thought that was going to be the bomb. Use that because I s- in some... and I was like, "This is the, this is bad. This is horrible. Like it doesn't cook all the way." Because guess what happens? Where every two pieces of bacon cross over each other, they don't really fully cook. Because you're not getting the equal heat application on both sides of the bacon. Because you can't get to both sides of the bacon. Because the there's there's two there's two sides. You can't see. What I'm doing, but there's there's a, there's there's two sides of bacon that are touching each other, not there, touching a hot surface. Yeah, and there might be a way to <sighs> properly do that involving slow cooking. So you uh, allow the maybe. heat to absorb in mm. while not trying to overcook the outer at outer side. So there might be a way of doing that, but pretty much all the recipes don't account for that. Yeah, no, no, no. So, so I guess I totally think it's possible to have bad bacon, like to have bad. Yeah, bad there is there is bad bacon. Yes, such bacon as soda. when you overcook it. Ban it. So yeah, bacon soda is um, not really real bacon. <laughs> FYI, it does say on it it is artificial bacon soda, but still, there there are word. some things artificial. That are artificial bacon that are okay, such as bacon's. Uh, there are, are artificial bacon that is not okay, such as tofurkey. 
or, or, or tofu bacon or well I suppose mm. that's what bacons are but it, it's a different application if you're actually right. trying to make right. it as a pseudo bacon strip that yeah. can work for me or turkey bacon Mm-mm. so we've done the good we've done the bad <laughs> so what's the fad what about the fad? Yes, David, tell us tell us about your pick for the fad. Because honestly, um, I have had this once. I was not impressed. Yes. So you're with me on this already. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. So my choice for fad is the maple bacon donut. Um, so if you remember... Again, we were talking about the 20s, you know, the 2000s, 2010s. Um, maple bacon something was like the flavor of the year kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It was a like, oh my God, it's so amazing. So this so this came out of that, this maple bacon donut. Um, there is a company here in Cincinnati called Holtman's Donuts. Um and I was very, you know, I was very curious about this. I will own personally um, maple, just maple on its own is not a flavor that I tend to gravitate towards. Um, if you remember, like the, um, my mom used to have a candy that she used to love called maple nut goodies. <gasps> and Oh, see, see, your your mom and I. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I I was not the biggest fan of them. They were okay, but it, it was just a little coy, too coyly sweet for me personally. Oh, sister, that is the truth. Like <laughs> I have, I have destroyed myself. Because I have seen them, you can usually find them, or at least recently I've seen them in like a Dollar Tree, and they come in a small pack. And actually, it's a good thing because the small pack is probably about the right size or a little too much because they are really sweet. Um, mm-hmm. But I have, yeah, I have yeah. like been, you know, in a weird and be like, oh my God, maple the goodies for Brock's and like bought, you know, like a half pound bag or some ridiculousness. Oh. And then, like, packed them away, and then about you know, not even twenty minutes, a half hour later, regretted, like, mm-hmm. just uh, yeah, not a, not a, Mm-mm-mm. not a good yeah. decision. So, better in small batches. Yes, agreed. So, so add so so what you're doing is you're adding like that very sweet, and you're adding like a salty bacon to it, mm-hmm. and technically, it's supposed to kind of balance them out, and it's a very unique flavor, and it's a very unique texture. So Holtman's has the maple nut, maple bacon donut, and I tried it, and I was not impressed. I don't know what it is. I don't know what part of it was not, like, vibing with me. Actually, I kind of have an idea. It was, and this is going to sound really just controversial, it was too much bacon, Mm. if that makes any kind of sense. I wish I could find a picture of it because it it um like the the link I shared is just a recipe because that's kind of what I wanted to grab. Um, but Holtman's in particular has a um I could probably find a picture, but it's not easy. Anyway, um, shut up. <sighs> Go to the site. Okay, so if you go to Holtman.com and you're looking at the site, um, you can probably find the maple bacon donut just by looking in the background. And I'll actually share it with you guys real quick. Where's the chat? There's the chat. I know this will probably send the link on my page. But, um, and I'll share it in the telegram, in the chat, chat live mm-hmm. chat um as well so if you're looking at it it's the one like immediately past like best donuts um kind of to the right of best donuts or yeah to the right um and and, and as you can see there's a lot of bacon on that 
and you can see the glaze and everything. It again was just too much, and it just did not work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, as someone who likes crispy bacon as right. opposed to soggy, like like you know, bacon or flimsy bacon, the mm-hmm. bacon is not the bacon is not crunchy. It's um, kind of like um, I mean, it's kind of like if you get real bacon bits in the store. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. So it just was, it wasn't, it, yeah, like, it, I get it, and, and maybe if I were to try a homemade one or someplace, a different place, maybe I would like it better, but. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult, so here's the thing. This this gets to the root of the issue why a maple bacon donut I think is just difficult or bacon bacon humidifies like and and gets weird and that's where I'm saying like it becomes difficult because like the way they're doing this I'm like right like I agree with you like it really kind of needs to be crispy bacon but the problem is it won't necessarily stay crispy I'm not saying that it is starting that way in some of these applications but yeah, this this chopped up ground, not ground, but like, you know, oh. ground uh, chopped up kind of bacon. Yeah, like it's already not quite cooked enough to crispy. And then like, you know, it's going to sit in a in a case and whatever and mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, that's a whole thing. Now, I believe one of the originators of the maple bacon donut was Voodoo Donut out on the West Coast. And mm. they do something called a bacon maple bar. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So it's a raised, like kind of rectangular yeast donut, um, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, that might be the way to refer to it. And what they do in the picture they posted is they put two strips of bacon, like two, like like one probably one strip cut in half, like two strips of, of like what looks like rather crisp bacon. Um, Maybe with some like seasonings or, or black brown sugar or whatever on it. And I'm like, okay, that to me seems a little intelligent because again, like they're trying to overcome that issue, but I don't know because I've not had it whether or not it is as great as it looks, but I think okay. I think it's challenging. Basically a maple yeah. long john, which is actually one of my favorite my favorite donuts as a kid. Still is actually now that I think about it. Mm. Uh, and then just adding a rasher of bacon. Oh wow. <laughs> I did not need to go to Voodoo Donut site and look at their donuts. Um, <laughs> they are infamous for making wild and crazy, like different um, donuts. Like they have one called the Grape Ape, um, one with Captain Crunch on it, um, one called a Maple Blazer Blunt. Which <laughs> me up. A Guava Colada. I mean, they've got they've got um, one that has many M and M's all over it. I mean, they they've got some. Some very interesting uh, kind of different stuff. So, anyways, all right. That, that reminds about that. me of uh, Gordo's, which is a which started off as a uh, food truck mm. here in uh, Austin, and then yeah. they expanded to um, they actually got their own restaurant. Where is their food trailer? Public House in Sophomore. Here is the menu. All and right, but his PDF. But they well, have donuts of many different types, and they call yeah. them uh, funny things. Nice. So, right. Gary, what about you? What is your uh, fat? Oh. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Chocolate-coated bacon. This was a <laughs> thing in the 90s, in the 2000s. No, actually in the 2000s. Um, uh-huh. I remember it came about in the 2000s because I was active in the Berg Bears. I was in Pittsburgh. We were in the Strip District. I remember Doug was with me. Um, and we actually went to pass walking past the chocolate shop. And it was one of the first times I was ever in the Strip. And they had chocolate-coated bacon. Mm-hmm. Chocolate bacon. And I was like, I've had this. And I was like kind of raving about it. So we each bought like a strip of like you know chocolate um coated bacon you know with a little salt on it and then was heavily disappointed oh yes and i was like this is not good this is not good bacon (laughs) this is not good chocolate (laughs) like what is wrong i couldn't piece it together and then later i discovered um personally 
I think it tastes best with dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely with some some uh, salt added to it, like mm-hmm. like big flaky salt. Um, yeah, you know, uh, and like this recipe, I just put the recipe here, kids, for the sake of it. I would not recommend the way they list it because they don't tell you what kind of chocolate to get. And worse yet, in the ingredients, they say one pound chocolate, and then in parentheses. They have broken all the rules of travesties. They write, or chocolate candy coating. Oh. Mama, no, 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 no. You are not doing this to bacon. You could do this to other foods. I don't care. Do not do that. <laughs> do not harm the bacon. Do not put chocolate candy coating on, on bacon. bacon. No. Either use the no. good chocolate or just don't and just eat the no. bacon. Just eat the bacon. Like, that's perfect, perfect. <laughs> that's that right there. Like, if you're going to put your crappy ass, like, shitty candy coated bullshit on it, no, don't. Just yeah. just have a piece of bacon. You know what's crazy is that someone in the comments wrote, this was supposed to be five star, not one. So this says to me, this is probably not a good recipe. <laughs> <sighs> the shade of it all. Anyways, uh, but I do. I I will admit I have wanted to try chocolate covered bacon because I think I like the idea of those flavors kind of work mm, meshing. I could see the flavors meshing. There, there like, might be a way to do it. Yeah, candy coating I, maybe not so much. Yeah, like the the the. A dark, I, I, I actually, I, this will be weird because I don't like dark chocolate, but I think a dark chocolate, sea salt, bacon, I feel like that would be a really good combination. And here's the, the other thing I will, I will say about chocolate coated bacon or chocolate covered bacon, chocolate dip bacon, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, it really kind of needs to be fresh. Now, I mm. don't mean like five minutes fresh. Yeah. I mean, like, I think you really have about a 24 to maybe 48 hour window and then you just kind of can't anymore. Because, again, yeah. the bacon changes, it humidifies, you know, how it reacts with the chocolate, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's yeah, it's a, so yeah. just be careful about that. Gary, how, about your, how about your last fat? <laughs> so I made a suggestion for Jeff for Jeff for a fat. He didn't like it. So apparently I'm going to. I'm going to say what it is. Oh, well, God, I'm this. just warning to you all. This is, this is, um, this I'm is, not this is, this, by the way, this is daddy Gare Bear. I'm, I'm, I'm giving this one to all of you out there. Never, ever, ever. I don't care how desperate the situation is. Do not ever purchase or use bacon flavored lube. Oh, no. Um, no. It is disgusting tasting, mm-hmm. and it tends to be highly scented. So if you want your junk to smell like smoke, like seasoning, because you probably aren't going to be able to wash it off. <laughs> so the bacon fl- flavored lube found on Bacon Addict. Apparently is vegan safe, making it a perfect gift for for the vegetarian in your life. So that's the, the mm, mm. That's I have to say this there. emphatically. I have been at bear runs where somebody thought it was smart or intelligent to bring flavored lubes, which tend to be scented as well. Mm-hmm. And I have walked past people and recognized the smell of something. And I don't mean the smell of sex. And I have had people confirm for me that they have used bacon flavored lube because it was a gag gift and instantly regretted it. I oh. I am clearly labeling this as Gary's. <laughs> I, I just to I, be fair, and I wrote LOLZ because I was like. <laughs> Like, surely I, this is a hmm. fad thing that should have died and gone away, but I know that it has not. Yes, I remember I remember the flavored lubes back in the day. 
um, like cola and 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 pineapple, cherry and, cherry and, cherry and, and grape, strawberry, um, strawberry. Beer. Yeah, and then I, re- I, I, I have never had or smelled bacon flavored lube, but I'm sure Don't do it. it's atrocious. I, I, I could, I could just, I could just feel it in my nostril right now. That fake bacony smell. Exactly. That chemically like bacony smell. Like probably like a little smoky, but just all of that, just that that. Mm. And here's my not. It's hitting my nostrils, and I know you guys can't see my face if you're not watching. But I'll have a link but, to bacon flavored loop in the. In the oh, show. thanks. So, That's great. So um, can, can yeah, it, it it is not. It is not. I should probably put that in the chat too, since I'm. From, this is the 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 one that I found in bacon egg addicts. Mm-mm. No, ma'am. So, the, anyways, I'm be, what a way I'm to. I'm and honest. No, I'm just gonna say this now. If you if you want a bacon flavored you lube, just use basic bacon grease. Oh, Girl, go. okay. <laughs> I can't let you get away with that. I'm just uh-huh. gonna set the record straight. <laughs> if you decide for some reason that bacon grease is the lubricant that you're gonna use for your sexual activities, couple couple things to know. Daddy Daddy Gerber is gonna step in here because I got to. One, strain your bacon grease. Filter it. Take out any of the, like, not only the the chunks and the bits, but, like, it'll help just, like, kind of, you know, make sure that it's... Smooth it out. Yes. Um, And, uh, obviously, um, you really shouldn't use it with any prophylactics because it will have the potential for breaking down any type of barrier. So, Mm -hmm. I'm sure... If you've listened in the past, you will know that we have done a food episode before regarding sex. I had very strong opinions about that entire episode with Uncle Pete when he was on. <laughs> Whose idea I still was that episode, by the way? Feel that way. <laughs> but for the record, um, this falls into that category, and I'm still like, no, for me, yeah. Uh, but no, in, in, in all seriousness, like you would want to, because because uh, I do get it. Like some people want to use natural products. There are lubricants that are made from plant based things. Um, aloe happens to be, um, you know, one type thing. Um, there's there's different things that are out there. So you know, but if you decide you're going to get adventurous at home, um, and you don't have you know, that can of Crisco with you, oh, girl. okay. <laughs> Mm-mm. Technology has advanced us. Please let's let's use that. Yeah, let's. So. Yes, agreed. Let's. What a way to wrap up the show. They can wrap up the show. Uh... Anyways, <laughs> bacon and then the more to the good. Bacon wrap a bacon wrap filet mignon. Bacon wrap mm. sausages. Okay, for the record, Owen, <laughs> we're not saying that we've moved away from garlic sal- salted booty holes. Like, just no, just it, watch it's still, Yeah, that's still just, a thing. It's, it's just not what we're talking In about a today. Certain household. In fact, just remember, someone's now engaged, going to get married. If you're thinking about a gift for the newlyweds, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so much. Just, just a container of garlic salt will be perfectly fine. If you come to this fucking wedding, I see a fucking bag of garlic salt sitting on the table. I'm going to be mad as hell. You don't, you don't want Gary out. to be your best man and give the best man speech because he's probably going to bring out something. You no, know I got to do it now. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to walk uh, into the, like, looking at the gifts and be like, who put this garlic salt here? <laughs> and the thing is, we have a clip uh, all about this for uh-huh. everybody to to listen to, because all it has is the post show. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, speaking of ending the show. <laughs> anyway, there's play ways to contact us. Tell us how you like your bacon. 
Uh, if you don't like bacon, don't respond. Because we're not going to listen to you. I have to say, we're uh, the, the, the three of us are a little biased. In any case, play by to contact us, pop a virtual website, comesoutloud.com, where you can leave a comment on the blog. You can shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at, at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Tumblr, or Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can join our Entourage chat where you'll be able to see pictures of bacon, uh, courtesy of Owen at uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col to join. You can also subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we're planning on recording these shows. And you can do that at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements, such as a uh, Cubs Out Loud shirt, or some designs by Smashy, such as the Consent is My Foreplay shirt that uh, uh, d- both Game- Damon and Gary, I almost said Gaiman and Barry, uh, <laughs> are wearing. That was designed by Smashy, who also has his own store at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become supporting us by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud. We thank all of their patients, it, the patrons for their support to making this show, uh, including those and en- those every two year server fees. Oof. That's a good chunk of money, but it's uh, for two years. So uh, you can also uh, just send us a little bit of cash by going to paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can also find us via social media or uh, various uh, podcast directories, uh, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Amazon, Audible, uh, and Spotify. And you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Something or Other. And you can also watch me DM on Thursdays for Bears and Dragons over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash windgem, W-I-N-D-G-E-M. Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on most bear related sites as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, you can find me there, like on most sites, or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gibber73. And with that, I will say, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. Oh. Well.